So the first um, the first thing I'm just going to talk about for a minute. Um, so we're, I'm going to write code today, basically live, and I think there's some utility in this because I'm not just gonna, you're not just going to sit there and watch me type. I mean, I'm going to explain to you the thought process, and I think that's useful. Uh, other people have told me that you know it's useful to because if you're not if you don't have an aptitude for coding and have a lot of practice at it, you may not really understand why you do one thing or another. Uh, the other thing is, um, I'm going to use Python. And there's kind of three reasons for that. One is I prefer it. And that alone is not a good enough reason to convince anyone else to use Python. Um, but with um, I prefer it with the experience of 15 years of coding on a daily basis uh, in about 10 different languages, okay, and uh, including MATLAB, and um, you know one of the one of the big feedbacks we get from students in their exit interviews when they leave there is that well you you spent all this time teaching us MATLAB and forcing us to use it in our classes, and I'm going to work for a small company X Y Z, and they're not going to have MATLAB, so that, all of that was a big waste of time. Because MATLAB's too expensive, you know, at a commercial level for this company to have. You know, yeah. that has three engineers. Well, this, this kind of stuff that we see with students out there in the classroom, you know, so if you take any class from me, you're going to code. <laughs> so, so yeah. the the thing about Python is, is it can do everything MATLAB can do, and more. And it's 100% completely free. Um, so there's a good, there's actually a good reason for that. Uh, it, th there's a reason in, in that uh, you know because Python's free and completely open source, you can take Python and you can package it up in your own application. That application could run on a Raspberry Pi that's embedded in your motorcycle to play songs in your in your helmet, right? I mean you could you have the skills to write a code that could do that, okay? And the beauty of Python is that because it's open source and, and free, you can you can wrap it up, bundle it, and you can even sell your little widget to the world with Python embedded in it. And and when you start embedding software on smaller and smaller devices that are more and more memory limited, you may not want the entirety of the world of functions in there because they all all those libraries they all take up space that and if you're not using them you don't you don't want them on there. So um, you know if you're doing some just general purpose programming or something, not necessarily numerical programming, then you wouldn't want to install NumPy or SciPy or Matplotlib. So those are the three libraries that sort of give you the functionality that are equivalent to Mat to MATLAB, right? Um, so you know it's a general purpose programming language and and uh, it, it's far more powerful. It's object-oriented and other things, and it's 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 really far more powerful than MATLAB. But with the with the libraries, NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib, you can reproduce all the functionality of MATLAB and more. Right? So that's sort of one of the reasons I'm going to use Python, uh, and, and also just to show you guys, you know, here's a free piece of software you can use at any of your jobs, without that can do everything MATLAB can do. It's probably easier to write. I mean, you'll see when I write the code, it, it sort of almost looks like pseudocode, like how you would write you know, pseudocode. It's like pseudocode is like if I was going to go over there on a board and write out a program, I would say like for i equals, you know, th this is almost exactly the syntax for Python. So it's, it's almost easier to write. <coughs> so I'll give you some exposure to that. Uh, what else? The, 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 the sort of. The, the second reason I'm going to use Python is because by the end of Monday's class, I'm going to have written basically the entire code. What's left for you to do right? uh, if I just did it in MATLAB? So you're either going to have to learn a little Python if you want to follow what I did, or you're going to have to translate my Python into MATLAB, which is not that hard. But it, that leaves something for you to do. right? Uh, so I, I had a and I thought of another reason, but anyway, I, I can't think of it now. So uh, I'm sort of old school. I, I, I just do all of my coding in the command window with a 
for the proper editor. So I, I, this is just a terminal window on a Mac uh, that, that I've split into three panes. So down here is a pane where I'm going to sort of run the code. This is sort of my console, you know, where I'm going to type commands here that will be executed. This is an editor window. So this is part of the code that I've already written, and I'm going to write more today. This is an editor window. And this is, this is also an editor window, but this includes my inputs. Right? So I have a little input file. These are the parameters that, I'm, that, that are going to be read into my code. And really, the, the part of the code that exists there is just the part of the code that parses my input. Okay? But if you like a more MATLAB-esque interface, um, you can really easily s install uh, Spider. Okay. Spider. <coughs> and Spider gives you sort of your, it's very MATLAB-esque console. So here's your editor window, here's your console, this is where messages would come up or your variable inspector here. So And, and also, um, if you were to execute code, then your, your plots would appear. Like let's see. So what I do, install NumPy. If I installed NumPy and Apple Live, I could just make a plot here and it would pop up here. If, if you prefer, you know, not not to be, uh, you know, to, to use a more integrated development in, environment, that's what those things are called. Okay. So, <coughs> again, uh, the part of the code that's that you're looking at is really just the code that I've written. That, that parses these inputs. Right? So this is just a text file. <coughs> and I gave it a special structure. Uh, this is called YAML, Ye yet another markup language. Okay. So I like YAML because it's very easy to read, but it has a structure to it. And the, the benefit of that is then there's libraries that can so There's other markup languages like HTML is one, right? The one that web pages are made of. And uh, then there's also XML, extended markup language, JSON, and YAML. <laughs> you know, YAML is sort of the one with the least amount of uh, extra characters to, to mark up, you know, to, to what's in there. So this is my input file. And then I, you know, in Python, I can, there's just a simple uh, library, a YAML, YAML library. And so then I can just say YAML load my file name, and, and it just sucks everything in. And then I can just define things right based on their name right so I'm going to define a variable DT and don't worry about these selves right you'll see a lot of that in the code these are associated with the object oriented nature of Python um, which is not really important for what we're talking about today so just sort of ignore the selves I mean these are variables right DT and width and and mu and Q and you can see that you know just based on this uh, YAML library then I can just I read it in to, a, to a, something called input data, which contains everything, and then I can suck out, you know, numerical time step and, and, lo and store it as DT. Right. And so that comes from here. And that time step is this. So, so all of this is just sort of a, an initialization step. And then what we're going to write today, <coughs> you know, I have two. F I have a function here: create grid and elastic influence function. So, if you remember, <coughs> we had this um, this thing A, this matrix A I K, uh, that was this constant times this influence function. And the influence function is a function of the grid centers and the grid corners integrated over the entire domain. Okay. And so the what I'm calling the elastic influence function is this AIK. And we can just solve for that once up front. Once we define the grid, we just have to compute what that is one time. Right. <coughs> so we can do that as sort of an initialization step. <coughs> and if you remember that this is what I is. Right. <coughs> so it's the X position of the center 
of the ith grid block minus the x position of the right side of the kth grid block. Right? And both i and k go from 1 to the number of grid blocks. Right? So it's going to be a matrix because you know, you'll, you'll have i rows and k columns. <coughs> And I'm going to create that guy. <coughs> I'm going to create that guy in sort of the most using. Remember, right at the end of last class, I, sh I showed you how that you can use this broadcasting feature in MATLAB. Well, you can also do that in, in Python. Uh, and so I'm going to create that in sort of a really compact way without writing a for loop. So you would you would normally sort of maybe your coding intuition would tell you if I'm going to create a matrix. I k, then I need to create a write a for loop, two for loops, one that loops over i, one that loops over k. I'm going to show you that using the broadcasting feature in Python, you you don't have to do that. Those of you that come in late, I'm doing this in Python. But I'll post the homework assignment later today. You don't have to do it in Python. You can do it in MATLAB, but that's going to cause you're going to have to basically translate my Python code into MATLAB, or or you can use Python, whatever you want to do. Okay. <coughs> It's just, I have to make you do something because by the end of Monday's class, I will have written the whole code. <laughs> so you either have to learn Python and use what I wrote or translate it. All right, so the, the first thing we need to do uh, is to define the grid, okay? So um, I'm going to create a lin linear space. <coughs> So the little NP in front, that's just associated with this so-called NumPy library. Okay, so, uh, and uh, you know I imported at the beginning. So if you see up there, it says import NumPy as NP. So what that means is it brings in all the functions. So NumPy are sort of all the array functions and it gives you sort of all the data structures that you need to do the computations. And then SciPy is another library. This does. Uh, this is all your, your sort of like root finding and all these kind of algorithms. Uh, that, that so the combination of the two, uh, along with a plotting library called Matplotlib, will give you all the functionality of MATLAB. Uh, so, so that's what a little NP in front is just basically to indicate that I'm in the namespace of um, <coughs> of NumPy, and so then I'm going to create a linear space that's going to go from zero to the length. So this is that self length that's a variable that I read in over here from that length. So it's it's actually five in this case, right? So I read it in, it's five. So I'm gonna go from, from zero to five. <coughs> in um, There's going to be a total of nx, right? So nx is the total number. So in this case, 10. That means there's 10 grid blocks. So the length is 5, the height is 5, and I'm going to break it up into actually uh, 9. There'll be 9 grid blocks, right? Nx will be the number of corners of the grid block. It's going to be 9 grid blocks. <coughs> so then I'm going to have y at the top is equal to, there's a function in, in, in NumPy called ones like. So what I'm saying is when I say ones like x, so x is, is, is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So I want yt to have the same structure as x, meaning it's, it's the same size as x. But instead of having being 1, 2, 3, 4, I just want it to have 1s. So it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And it's going to have the same length as x. <coughs> and so if I just multiply that uh, by the height, right? because that's, that's the y at the top of the fracture. Yt is y at the top of the fracture, so that's going to be height. Right? 
and y at the bottom of the fracture is going to be just zero. We're going to use the we're going to use the bottom of the fracture will be our zero, and the top will be height. A vector. So x is a vector, uh, y, y t is a vector like x, meaning it's the same size, but it's going to have ones in it. And then if I, if I multiply one by the height, then it's going to have height, right? It's a little trick. Uh, yeah, so the syntax is a little bit different. Yes, but probably not much different, yeah. Good idea, though. Um, okay, so then, uh, so then I'm going to define the grid centers. So I'll put a comment in here, define grid centers. So that X represents the corners of the grids, right? So now, to find the, the centers, and we'll call that xc, now we can use one of those finite difference operations that we talked about last time. So we're going to take, now Python, like all good programming languages, are zero indexed, right? So in MATLAB, the first element of an array is one. In Python, it's zero. That's the same as C. Right? In C languages, C++, the first index is zero. There's a, a good reason for that. I won't talk about why. But so now, we're going to go from 1, and the colon means the end. So that's a, x is an array. I'm going to start in the 1 indice, which is actually the second one, right? Because it's 0, 1. So I'm going to take from 1 to the end of the array. Right? And I'm going to add from the beginning to n minus 1, right? So in MATLAB, that would be n to minus 1, right? So 1 from the end. Right? So I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to back up 1. Right? So I'm going to start. This one starts in the second entry and goes all the way to the end. This one starts in the first entry and goes all the way to the end, minus 1. Right? <clears throat> I'm going to add those two together and divide by 2, and that's going to be the centers. And that's a one-liner. Right? <clears throat> okay, likewise, YC uh, is going to be self-height divided by 2 times MP ones like XC. Right? And the reason I did that is, you know, XC... XC is one, it has one in entry less, so it's the centers, right? So it has one entry less than X. So I'm going to have make a new vector, a new array that has uh, ones to the length of XC, and then I'm just going to multiply it by the height divided by two. That'll be the center in the Y direction. 